Seven and a half. <laughs> I really cram so much in my head every day. He's connected. Confirm with her. She can hear. Anybody write Hey, can you hear me? I'm to write any notes. It's all in my head. Oh, you have a good head. Oh, I guess it's smart for that. No, you did it. Sorry. He didn't recognize my hand. Testing, Kay, can you hear us? I can, yes, thank you. Kay, we are not hearing you at this point. Can you hear me now? Hmm. No, still not able to hear. Don't know this is worth five dollars. From the Hawaii in the volcanic water. Well, electrolyte. The What's more to ship at? Snow comes from snow melt and rain on the summit of Ala Volcano. It's on the big island. I think it's the one that's always active. Maybe the one that's on the other side. Well, actually, the big island, the volcano, it actually has snow on it. It's actually the highest point on the earth. Okay, would you Based be willing to take a question just to make sure we can receive your input? Crazy. Logan is troubleshooting right now. Alex. Oops, no. That's everybody that's RSU. Alex, we see you in the meeting. Can you hear us? Hi, good afternoon. Can you hear me? We're going to get into troubleshoot in just a moment. He's on. Yeah, you might want to write him on there like a good kid. And on the top, five, six or seven. Yeah, six or seven. Yeah. Um, it was like a first initial. Um, you know, I remember how much it's been the past week, so I'll have a good one. Let's slow down. Like he's muted. Well, the inventory still. Yeah, he, Alex, you take yourself off mute just once more just to see if we can hear you. Hello, can you hear me? Can we have this last time? Is that Anna? She was. Can you try one more time? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. I think it was on our end. And then Kay, if you wouldn't mind trying once more, ahead, we have it fixed. City. How's that? Oh, okay. Perfect. Okay. Awesome. Wes is going to be here. To be, you didn't hear back from him. You didn't hear back from Wes. I haven't heard back from Shabani there. So let's go ahead and start the meeting. Uh, first on the agenda, roll call. I think we've already got attendance recorded. Uh, next is approval of the October 19th meeting minutes. Hope you've all had a chance to review the minutes. And uh, unless there are some questions, I ask for a motion to approve. Second. Roll motion to approve. Marvin, second. All in favor say aye. All opposed aye. say aye. Okay, let's go on to uh, introduction of Sarah Gooden. Good afternoon. I'm Sarah Gooding, and I am the new Real Property Section Manager with Housing and Community Services. 
Um, I wanted to take a few moments and just share a little bit about me. I also look forward to getting to know and to work with each of you. Um, so my background is primarily in the news industry. I was a community journalist for almost 20 years um, before deciding it was going to be time to make some changes and continue to find ways to serve the community, but through a different mechanism. Um, so in 2018, I stepped back and worked on my Master of Public Administration at Wichita State. Um, in that same process, I also became a graduate assistant um, with the Public Policy and Management Center to have the opportunity to really learn from people working in the public service world um, and to work in a variety of different opportunities and locations through that job. Um, so some of my projects there involved community engagement, I'm working on strategic plans such as Sedgwick County and WSU Tech. Um, but one of the projects I wanted to share today is that I was part of the Shocker Neighborhood Coalition, um, and that project was grant funded by Kansas Health Foundation. Um, and it was a health and wellness initiative in some of the Shocker neighborhoods around Wichita State. So the summer of 2019, I got to lead health and wellness initiatives in those neighborhoods getting out, walking, running, activating the sidewalks, and getting to know the neighborhoods. Um, so I'm excited as I'm here to be working in some of those same areas again, especially with the land bank. Um, upon graduation in 2020, I was hired by the city of Derby, and I served two and a half years as the assistant to the city manager. Um, upon hire, that was Kathy Sexton and now Kyle Mangus. And so a lot of my role there involved research, analysis, contract management of all sorts of different types of contracts and just whatever sorts of projects the manager had that didn't fit well within other departments. So I'm used to carrying a lot of different things and quickly diving in and learning a great deal about any different topic. Um, one of my key contracts there was fresh service. We had a residential contract um, that I got to administer and troubleshoot and be customer service and all sorts of different roles. And I actually really enjoyed that challenge of working for customer satisfaction, navigating with partners, um, and just implementing that. We, we re-upped that contract during my time there. So I've been through the process of implementing program changes and the challenges there. Um, one of my assignments in Derby was to research home programs. Um, the city of Derby had a very small grant that, that was used for neighborhood revitalization that actually wasn't able to be used because the program wasn't fitting the need. Um, so as they worked to improve neighborhood maintenance codes, um, we revitalized and implemented a new program. And so through 2022, I've managed that small program that was targeted toward homeowners and helping with projects that otherwise might not be feasible for lower to moderate income homeowners. And so with that experience under my belt, I was really excited to um, get to be part of this team to jump in and really work on everything built property um, as we bring together public housing and that repositioning of that portfolio, um, the land bank, the affordable housing fund, um, and continuing the home improvement program that allows us to help homeowners with projects that allow them to stay in their homes. Um, sorry, I will learn to talk and navigate at the same time. Um, I also wanted to give you an update on our real property special program specialist recruitment. Um, on my second day with the department, we held second round interviews for two internal candidates for this position. Um, this position will be one of two real property program specialists, Roger being our current one. Um, and this person will work alongside Roger to support the Affordable Housing Fund and the Wichita Land Bank. Um, now, we have selected a candidate and we have offered the position, and that position has been accepted. Unfortunately, we are still pending pre employment checks, so we're not able to announce a name at this time. Um, but I did want to share a little bit about some of the factors that resulted in this candidate selection. We had two very strong candidates. Um, either would have been wonderful, but this candidate has served as a police officer, um, a real estate broker and agent, a project manager, business analyst, and property manager, and then has also worked within housing and community services um, as a housing specialist and working in compliance. 
And so we feel like there are some very strong skills and background there that will combine to be a very valuable team member. And so we hope here in December to be able to introduce that candidate. <laughs> Um, so I, I've tried to catch up on the business that you all have been working on since the formation of this board. And I know that the tax sale is something you all have been watching very closely. So I did want to let you know that that will take place December 6th and 7th. And we also want to highlight publicly the process for that, um, for the tax sale. And so bidders must register in advance with the treasurer's office. They must not own property with billing taxes. And we have confirmed that the sale will be online for the first time. Um, additionally, all parcels will start at zero. There will be no minimum bids. Um, they will all be offered at the same time and payment can be made via ACH or via credit card or cash. Um, and so I wanted to tell you that at this point in time, staff do plan to register for the tax sale. We do plan to watch the proceedings carefully to learn, um, but I believe at this point we are not pursuing any of the properties on this year's tax sale. And so this year, at this point in time, we've also been tracking daily um, where we stand on tax sale properties. And so 76 parcels remain unredeemed from Wichita city limits. And these do include the three parcels within the focus area of interest that this board has identified and looked into. And so in 2022, um, the tax sale started with 436 total properties countywide. As of today, within Wichita city limits, we stand at 277 and 21 of those are in the focus area. And so I wanted to show you the map get a better sense of what we're looking at. Okay, and pulled up today, I have the 2022 list and we're gonna zoom in. Let's see. And so our focus area is um, in North Wichita, um, 9th Street on the South, 17th Street on the North, um, East and West boundaries are Hillside and Grove. And so within that, I believe I said we had 21 properties. Um, the blue tabs that you see, typically we assume there may be a structure. These are properties that have real addresses. The ones with red markers are properties that um, we know the parcel numbers for, but not specific addresses at this time. So that would indicate that those may be vacant. There may not be structures. Um, staff have not yet <coughs> gone out and done a site assessment to verify the status of either one, but we will be doing that in the coming weeks. And um, we'll go to 2021. Quite a few fewer um, properties still remain unredeemed. And again, zooming in, this is the target area um, and the green, kind of all the green tabs represent the three properties that this board has been looking at. So that is where we stand at this point in time. And again, we will be watching those proceedings closely in the coming weeks. Sarah? Mm -hmm. So it says those are 2021 tax foreclosure, not redeemed. So is that last year's tax foreclosure or that's this year tax? Okay, so it's 21 delinquent tax. Yes. Okay. And so these would be the ones coming up for tax sale here in 2022, December. And the, the light green is the ones we've talked about. Yes, yeah, so okay. these three here. If you get a copy of that map, can you email that to us? Any other questions? You had mentioned that we're not pursuing anything. Is there, why are we not pursuing anything? because nothing fits within our. Um, I think <laughs> if I'm remembering correctly, and I'll let Logan jump in as well, but I think that there were some complicating factors with a couple of the properties in terms of amounts of specials or um, willingness to donate ahead of the tax sale. Um, 
but I think Logan knows the status on these a little bit more than I do. Yeah, so it definitely plays into uh, exactly what Sarah mentioned, but also we want to start to build a relationship with Sedgwick County so that we're not actually having to come into the tax sale and compete with the public to, to purchase these. Um, like to get some type of a relationship worked out similar to what Pittsburgh does and that they enter a bid for the amount of <coughs> specials owed, but then after the tax sale, they just directly transfer that property to us with no money changing hands. Um, and so we'd like to just observe the process um, as it happened this year, um, actually figure out what these properties end up selling for um, to see, you know, what the difference between the specials owed and what they end up selling for actually is, um, and then go from go from there. There was a title issue on, I believe, one of the properties. I know Jeff Van Zant, who I don't believe is here today, um, he looked at these title reports in more detail. There was a title issue with one of them that would make us not want to possibly pursue. And then up until recently, we were still trying to work with the owner of the, I believe it's this. Uh, property on Grove Street, if I'm remembering that correctly. No, it was the one in the middle, one up to the top. Um, we were trying to work with her because she had expressed possible interest in selling to us, um, but unfortunately, our calls and letters have now gone unresponsive, and we don't have a working number for that individual anymore. So um, it would be nice if our first property um, that we had come into the land bank could be through a donation process because then we're not subject to that two year waiting period either. Um, that we know that properties that come out of the tax sale are. Um, and so I think we're just not quite ready at this time to just is there anything else you'd like to add, Sally? No, I mean, we're also in the time crunch. Um, yeah, we wouldn't be able to, there is no more council meetings before the tax sale. I mean, the next council meeting is actually the day of the tax sale. And per the, the ordinance that created this board, we would actually have to go to the, take this back to the council. So the timing on this and the fact that they don't have um, a council meeting um, next week due to the National League of Cities conference, make that account. So on the two years that we have to wait, anything that the property- I thought it was one year, I didn't think. Yeah, I thought it was a year or two. It's at least a year. It can be as many as 15. Um, what we're hearing is it averages about two before title companies are working um, to be able to issue title insurance on those properties. So what happens in the interim then for the two years? We'll have to hold them, A, to maintain them, keep them cleaned and mowed. And that does give us a little bit of time to fix through any title issues that could present after. Um, the there were a couple of title companies that Jeff found up working with Wyandotte that said they would issue title, but I don't know that we followed up with so it was a chance to get with them and, and see if they could really perform and if their performance will work down in this market uh, before we end up with a property. Because yeah, security security first is pretty serious that it's a it's a 15 for a quick claim. So, I mean, I haven't heard one or two years from that. 15 years? But basically, you're going to file an adverse possession claim. You know, you're going to own it for 15 and then file on it. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's what they told me when I bought those lots. Remember, I brought that up months ago. I couldn't, they said I couldn't decide to go find the old guy and get the quick claim the deeds over and pay him, even though I bought him at the sheriff's sale. Give me the deed. <laughs> Fill me no title for 15 years. And I can't secure title was going to do it. And they said three or four. They said less. So it is possible to get it maybe at a different title company. Three. And there's going to be a lot at least a year. It is, yeah. It has a little bit of problems right now with some other. Oh, <laughs> get into that. Sell for <laughs> maybe. Don't put together a report our next meeting that sort of says here's here's what happened at the foreclosure sale or what's the process yeah so hopefully we have that data by the time we meet next um but we actually have put in a request this is for past tax sale information but i'm sure we can put the request in for this sale too um we put in a request with the 18th district court and i'm sure sarah will probably talk about this later maybe we can just skip it 
to actually request what's called an exhibit B from each sale. And what that is, is it's a, a list of properties that ended up going to sale, um, how much in taxes they were um, in arrears <coughs> at the time of the sale, how much they sold for, and then I believe who they sold to as well. And the reason we wanted to request um, 10 years is so we can analyze that data to see if there actually are a lot of properties that are, you know, they're being purchased at tax sale and then exactly, yeah. Um, I don't know that we'll have, we'll be able to get our hands on the Exhibit D in time for our next meeting for um, this upcoming sale that's taking place at the beginning of December, but that's why we wanted to register so that we can start to, you know, peek in on the process, see what the high bid ended up being on. Definitely the properties within our um, focus area, but might also take a couple from you know, other areas just to see what they end up going for. Will the treasurer not give us that information? He directed us to, well, the person that um, but provided us the information to make that request to the district court is actually someone who works within her office. I haven't been communicating directly with the treasurer, but she directed me to the 18th district court. And so that's why that request was put in with them. So that's not public information who buys tax. I think it is. I think we just have, you to, have to get it through the district court because of those filings that they do. But it is public information. Yeah. But we have history to look at. And once they give it to us. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. And we don't have the list of you know, what properties ended up going to tax sale last year. Um, I suppose we could use the Register of Deeds website to look up the legal description on those properties and then actually see the filings that way. Um, but it would be nice if we could just get that directly from district court so that we could use the high level information. It would take not as long. I hate to just start looking at history beginning at the next sale when we have years of history of what it is, because now we're just going to sit on our hands. And then when's the next tax for sale? Closure sale? Who knows? Well, it'll probably be September now that they're up and running. One of the September of 2020. 23. And what is it on our hands for the year? No, I think, I think we need to take the same tag, right? I mean, that's up to the board, but as we did with this set, this first set is let's identify now those ones that we might want to get in front of and say, hey, you're up for tax for closure next year. Are you interested in donating to the, you know, to the limit? And explain to me why with you know, anything because of the relationships well, one, we don't want to spend money, right? Remember, we were advised, don't no, spend no, money. We also don't want to set a precedent no. of the city of Wichita is just going to come to the sale and they have to play by the, you know, the rules that are already in place. We, we like to establish that relationship so there could be that direct transfer that we see in so many land banks across the country from counties to land banks. What are we doing to establish that relationship where we can have that direct? We definitely need to start having some additional conversations with the county, but ahead of that happening, we need our county legal departments to, to link up so that we can get an analysis of state statutes. If you want to go back to the PowerPoint, uh, I actually have those linked there. there you know, one, one thing I would say to this next tax sale is going to be a brave new world for the county. When it online, they're starting a zero bid and all of this. And unless we were just really, really convinced that we had something we wanted and we could lock up, had all the questions answered, I'd, I'd recommend from real estate side, we just watch. It, it, this could turn into something. I mean, it, it took them an extra five months to get it teed up. And so, you know, and I'm not hearing that anything that we've looked at we're absolutely sure that we want and we can clear title and all of that. So I think waiting and watching makes sense. But it sounds like the best way to get the property is to have them donate. So is there a way to, not the right word, I would say like if you get their taxes, put it in there, like some propaganda of some kind that says, hey, instead of have you thought about donating your property to the land bank? Because I think a lot, I think maybe people would do that if they knew it was an option. I just don't think it's available. I think if we could get it into the, the link with taxes when they get it in the mail, 
maybe they open it and go, oh, okay, I don't have to pay these taxes. So we send in letters. I mean, on the on the three you identified, we were sending letters directly to those. So you, and you got one. So, who, and then wait, who ghosted us thereafter? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It goes to you. But I mean, if you send them to all of them, then maybe we're in a better you get maybe 5%, you know, something. So, because obviously if they sign it over, then we don't have to mess with the title. And we knew we were really, we didn't know when the tax sale was going to happen. So we were really only looking at the vacant parcels for a while there. Where now, I mean, obviously if someone's going to be willing to say, I'm out, um, is a little different than displacing someone by going after a property somebody's living in for the tax sale. So we could, you know, if that is the, what the board would, would like to see happen, we can make that recommendation that we get those letters to the 2021, 2021 grouping, right? 2022. 2022 grouping, the new grouping, they're always operating a, a year before. Um, we sent letters to the 2021, so we sent letters to everyone in that area that are coming up for tax sale now. We did for the 2021 sale. We can for the 2022 sale, um, but we were gonna at least do a drive-by because we're not interested in acquiring properties that are um, no, no. occupied. Oh, well, if they wanna sign them over, we maybe. Take care of all of it before they. Yeah. I, I'd, I'd like to see us do a drive-by and I'd like to see letters go to everybody in that target area to see what response. I mean, it's not like we have to, do anything, but it, it'd be interesting to continue the process and see how it works. And then I'd, I'd like to see an analysis on each one of those properties as to once you do the drive-by, what's the thought process on it, what are the delinquent taxes on it, and I'm I'm going to probably log in and watch the sale. And if I had, to be honest, I'm probably going to do that information unless you guys do it for me, just to see. So that we can analyze, you know, how does it really work? Uh, and then, you know, what is the bid on it? And did that cover the taxes or was that not an issue? Uh, we've heard they never cover the taxes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then the question would be is then, then to see what happens with the property. Yes. Yeah. It's like, I mean, that's a good point too, and wanting to see of the ones that sold in the past, how many actually came back into productive use or are just still sitting. Part of why we want to see that back. What, what happens if it's if you can't get clear title for 15 years? You know, I'm not going to put a whole lot of money into the property. I may go ahead and let it out, let it continue to deteriorate. I think that's the key. You just can't sell it. I can't sell it, and I don't want to put a whole lot of money into it. That's so, why a lot of people rent it, own it. Well, and you and you can sell by quick claim, and yeah, and these are not in, in this area, 90% of the transactions are quick claim. Oh. Hey, hey, did you have something? I see you have your hand up. I do. I want to go back to a question. I think it was Gary who asked. Um, this is the second or maybe even the third meeting where we've talked to, uh, about the relationship with the county and needing to um, create some je ne sais quoi there uh, so that we can, we can move a little quicker. What does that look like and what are the steps that one, what are the steps we're taking? And two, what's the plan to move that relationship along? Um, that seems like a barrier for to our progress. And so I'd, I'd really like to know what it is you all are doing. And then additionally, what is it that the rest of us on the board could do to, to provide some support for that? Sure. So I think our first step is going to be in further engaging our city legal um, team to provide opinions on those two statutes that you see on the slides here. The first one is the statute that governs uh, the tax foreclosure process, and the second one is a statute that governs um, how land banks can operate and actually addresses the way in which land banks um, can receive uh, properties from other governmental entities uh, through that direct transfer process. Um, unfortunately, we just haven't made a ton of headway on that. Um, the other thing that kind of came out of a, the discussion that we had with the county on August 28th, I believe it was, um, was there was a willingness for the county to have their legal department sit down with our legal team and, and flesh through how their process works and how it you know stays in compliance with the state statutes. And so we've been given a direction that those that legal analysis has to happen before we start to engage um, county and so I think 
blooming fruit is really going to be, or our first step, I guess, is a better, probably not blooming fruit, it's going to take some time, is actually really working to start and analyze those statutes and, and getting our legal team engaged um, and actually making that happen. Any idea what the time frame is? Yeah. I would like to have that happen as soon as, I would have liked to have, have that happen a couple months ago, honestly. But, um, you know, other things take priority in that. We understand that. Um, but we're really going to start leaning on them harder um, to to make those conversations start to happen and, and to get that um, legal opinion. Because the way that we, which we're not lawyers or attorneys, so take this for what it's worth, the way that we read that chapter 79, article 28, it doesn't seem to jive with the way that the county is actually doing their process. But we can't say that with 100% certainty because with the foreclosure, the tax foreclosure process, but we can't say that for 100% certainty because there could be another statute that is out there that could govern the way or support the way that they're doing their process, if you will. So do you feel like we should not have a conversation with the county about moving forward on this until after legal departments have had a chance to talk and think about it? Or can we encourage the county to uh, encourage the legal department to get moving? I think it kind of needs to start with with us um, making doing that reach out to county legal. Um, but I mean, it w obviously wouldn't hurt. I think to have the yeah. county leadership also leaning on their legal team to start working with us too. It's just a matter of uh, making sure we have a full understanding before we start to go to the county. You know, our city manager goes to the county manager or whatever that looks like, um, because we need to better understand those statutes before we start trying to create a system that works differently than the one or make a request to operate it in some way. I think I just like to underscore that to the degree that we can make progress on that. It, it seems that's our number one barrier to being able to do anything. Um, and I don't frankly know how many more meetings we can come back and talk about the problem without having come up with at least some action steps to help um, make some progress there. So. Um, to the degree that we can elevate that, I, I'd love to see that m move forward. That's something that we can expect to have direction on between now and next meeting. Yeah, so we'll get with our legal department and really start um, leaning on them a little bit more to try and help us get this uh, moved in the right direction. I would, I would second what she just said because this is kind of we can't do anything it's kind of a waste of our time um and i would encourage this has got to be more communication between staff between Cedric county and the city we're having to get attorneys involved and interpret something there's other issues that we need to probably address or we i mean at the same time we're trying to get those figured out we're trying to do this for months then there's other problems. Then there's other issues than just that. So I guess we'd be nice to know at some point what those issues are and if it's something that is trustee we can sit down with commissioners to sit down with staff. I don't know if it's fair for staff of city staff of Cedric County if we don't have a all the same. We all have the same want, I think. I think that if we get these houses to be built up and have owners in them, it creates higher revenue and it's, everybody's good. There should be any conflict of interest with them. Do we have procedures? Do we have procedures that we would like to see followed related to this? And I know you've got law that we have to abide by. But you know, one of the discussions we had was maybe the county would give us an opportunity to acquire properties. Is there any way we could sort of put together some procedures that we think something we'd like to see just so we have a start for discussion? Makes sense. You know, like what that relationship, we, what we would like the relationship to look like between the land bank and the county. And the fact that the, the properties are bid in at whatever the outstanding tax value is. Yeah, yeah. But that's yeah. that's what we'd like to see. And then if it does not sell, 
for an amount greater than that, then we would have the option to accept and take it and utilize it redevelop. I think that's exactly the type of relationship that we would like to have. I guess I'd, I'd like to have it sort of written out. So whenever we get to understanding what the laws are, we can say, okay, this fits in within the law, and here's the way we sort of envision this happening. And then we have something to discuss with the county. Does that make sense? I think part of the, part of the concern was the county didn't wasn't even aware of some of the statutes that say they can give it to the land bank. And that's why that conversation about, you know, we can't be having a conversation with them saying, we want you to do something. They're going, we can't do that. And we're like, well, yeah, you can. And this is exactly why we needed to get our lawyers. <coughs> our lawyers to say, I guess if we and, had procedures that we had outlined and we referenced the law. Right. It says it can do that. But maybe. then they also had the flip side of it of that's not fair to other communities. Even if we can do that, that's not necessarily fair to other community, you know, other communities in such a county. So we do that for you. That makes sense. No communities. communities. Which doesn't make sense because Wichita's not gonna have an interest in properties that come up for tax sale in Park City and vice versa. I would think Park City would have taxes. Fit in also. Oh, you said that too. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, all, all do it for them is, too. <laughs> all is, is basically forgiving delinquent taxes. Uh, I don't. I, I didn't realize that was the mention of the county to give delinquent taxes. I thought you had to collect them when you sold property. That's why you had a tax foreclosure sale. But it seems to be what the majority of people I speak or talk to think happens but from what i hear it is not what happens so my only yeah. thought is if we had something in writing so that we sort of knew what we think it should be we have reference to legal that says this is what it should be then at least we could have an intelligent conversation with county commissioners the county legal group and go from there staff. otherwise it's well here's what i think you know, instead of here's here's facts behind it. So just trying to find something. Sarah to do <laughs> It's not like we need to find common ground. Yes. Yeah. Right. yeah. And if that's and all when you said we're all we're I think we're all on the same page. I'm thinking not for my conversation with the county, we're not. They're they the treasures, they were not concerned when I owed whether it went for affordable housing. I'm not sure is it just one person? No, was that Group from the treasurer's office. You know, they were about this is our policy and our process. This is what we do. You know, and that's why I say I don't know that we are all um, wanting the same end goal. Um, I think we are all <laughs> wanting the same end goal, but I don't know that the county is. All want their own land bank. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> Sally, I'm not sure the county commissioners understand. Well, and then there's that, the, according to the treasurer, she doesn't have to take direction from the county commission. Mm -hmm. So that's where we get into that. We need a legal review on all of this, too. The statute kind of says otherwise. Yes, I agree. The statute, the statute says otherwise. otherwise. <laughs> I'm say, uh, here's a, yeah, county commissioners would say. And we're not trying to rub her the wrong way no. in the end. You know, it was. Yeah, but at some point. To accomplish something good for everybody, you have to do that. I request that by some type of procedure so that we have that with reference to the legal aspect of it. And again, give us a copy of that map. And if you can come up with a summary statement on each of the properties in our target area, or we'll give us an idea so that I. I think all of us ought to log on and sit there and watch and see what happens, and then we can discuss further, you know, how we move forward in the future. You may have to register to watch. That's fine. Just so you're aware that. Yeah. And and it's a two-day sale, so if it's if it's like most online auctions, nothing will happen until the twenty you know, the forty seventh hour. Right. right. I, I think. We were planning on registering and just checking to see what happens. I went through and 
looked up all the information, and then I deleted everything that's already been redeemed because it's, it's it's pages and pages of nothing, and got it down to where at least I can watch and monitor and see what other properties have been redeemed because it's it was a 53 pages or something. If one's low enough, I'll buy one just for the hell of it. Let's buy one. I'll see what happens. We'll guinea pig it. Well, I'll see I'm what happens. We'll see what way. happens with title. Uh, Roll it out. You know, maybe, maybe it happens. Maybe it don't. And then you can donate it to the land. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> he can he can take care of it, Gary. Run it. No. Manage it for the next fifteen years. <laughs> we got fifteen years to manage it, Gary. You donate it to the land bank, as the and members. then you don't, and then you cover it for fifteen. Valley can be donated to the land bank as board members. Or is that a conflict? That's a conflict. Okay. Well, well I, I think we could get a legal opinion on that, but <laughs> speaking speaking of, I, I was thinking on when I looked at some of these on the tax deal from before from looking at previous sales, I had noticed that a majority, not all of them, but there was a high number that were in some kind of a probate that were in tied up with the states. And so is that something that legal can even do if they were to, because I've talked to some of the people before and the people wanted to get rid of the property, they would even donate it probably if they have the money to probate it, but they don't have the money to do the probate. You know, what I'm you know, understand. So they don't have the money to actually go through the process. Is that something that can be done with our legal to if they get it donated to the land bank to probate something yeah. like that? Because it like sounded like there's just a couple of things that need to be filed to get it probated, but they didn't actually have the money to hire to get it. <clears throat> you don't understand what I'm saying? Because yeah. it's some of, some of it's just a simple. Pieces, a couple pieces of paper maybe to get it done where they need to get the house and they have no way of paying taxes and they don't want the property either. They, they want to just be done with it, but they can't do it because it's, it's, the brother's it's, it's, deceased it's, it's, or sisters and it's theirs and it, and it just sits there and, and that's why nothing ever gets done. And then, and then like the lady, she went and paid the taxes because she didn't want to lose her brother's house, but the brother was dead and it just keeps rolling and she just keeps paying that last year's it happens in other areas with the city too i mean we see it in in with demolition potential demolitions where the person who's taking care of it doesn't have the legal ownership so they can't get grants and loans to, to do the repairs it, it is a vicious cycle it is definitely very challenging but it, it's not going to be something that the city's legal department is going to take on taking people's yeah. Property through through probate. I think if we walk through the process on this grouping, we'll start seeing some of these issues, and then maybe we can address those better, uh, so that we understand what are the challenges. But I do know from my review of the statutes, though, too, is if a property is hung up in a in a court case, it can delay it being sold on the tax sale. So <coughs> it was one of those entries that I could actually understand. <laughs> how it there are a couple of them that just like talk you in circles. I'm like, what did they just say? I'm not an attorney, but there's also the tax foreclosure can also push the other legal stuff happen. faster. Because uh, after so long, those taxes become a priority. And I, I think the last thing do is say, oh, that's got probate issues, or, and then ignore it. I think you just continue to push forward. So, uh, if we can follow up with some of those requests and get that information out to us before the tax sale as soon as possible, really, it'd be beneficial to sort of watch and pay attention to how, how it works. Thank you. Making a note. <laughs> Okay. Let's see. Did we kind of jumped ahead a little bit, um, but yeah, as we as we've looked, um, I know that one of the concerns the board had was the small slivers within <coughs> developments that were identified, and as staff have looked at those, those do not appear to be carrying all the specials for the development. Um, so we wanted to share back on that research. 
Um, and as we said before, we're going to, within that target area, staff will be out conducting visual inspections and we'll be sending letters to all the unoccupied property owners. Um, we could send occupied as well, but specifically um, unoccupied within that focus area so that they become aware of the land bank. Um, so I'd send it to all the property. Okay. Area, whether it's occupied or not, we send the letters to the owners of the property, not mm -hmm. the occupants of the house. Yes. And so um, I think we've covered some of this already, but this is our plan at this time for further conversations and relationship building with Cedric County. Um, we do want to go into those conversations with that legal understanding of the statutes. Um, and then we hope maybe between city and county legal that we can make some headway in those conversations. If we need to though, we, are, we will be able to engage leadership in those conversations to continue things. And let's see, and I think Logan had shared about this as well, that we're going to try to get that history of things that have been sold on tax sale so that we can begin to do analysis for the target areas and have a better understanding for future sales. Um, Logan, did you have anything else on this? So have you heard since you made the request anything from that? Yeah. two weeks ago, I think. We anticipate uh, doing being this done. Is it a request and then you got a certain amount of days or start? Yeah, so we put the request in about two weeks ago and haven't heard anything back. So I'll probably send a follow up at the beginning of next week. Um, but it's just going to depend on how long it's going to take to do the analysis. It's partially going to depend on what format they provided in. If it's going to be electronic, searchable PDF, that's going to be much easier than if they just give us scans. Um, I'm assuming there's probably going to be a cost associated with this, um, probably going to be like a CORA request, unless they just see that we're from the city and want to be kind and just forward <coughs> it. But, uh, I, don't, I, I don't want to say that we'll have this in time for the next meeting, but certainly by January, um, we'll have something to report back on this. And speaking of future meetings, um, we wanted to discuss the 2023 meeting schedule. Our next meeting um, in 2022 will be December 14th. Um, we will be in this room, but we will be at 10 a.m. because the room was not available at the afternoon time. But as we look forward to 2023, we wanted to ask board members um, if you have preferred timing, um, if other times or dates might work better, or how, um, whether you would like staff to send out some options or how you would like to go about planning that scheduling. Days are good. It's kind of yeah. in the middle of the week. Mm -hmm. You're going to be gone. Or at least a best as well as I think the so, same, yeah, same time day, the same time would be. Yeah, I don't have any any. Gonna, is it going to be overall yeah. problem? Yeah. It, it should be. We need to check the calendar for next year just to make sure that this time and time slot or this date, day of the week and time slot are available. Um, we want to go ahead and get those on the calendar as soon as possible. Um, we weren't sure if maybe moving the meetings like later in the day would make it easier for people to attend, um, and so we just wanted to engage that discussion because I know sometimes meetings and stuff will popped up during your work day. And so we weren't sure if an evening time slot would be more preferred. But if if you guys want to stick with the 130 slot, um, I think this room should be accommodate, be able to accommodate most of the meetings in 2023, that time slot. We just need to get them on the calendar. If we find that there's more conflicts than availability, we'll reach back out. But anybody have any opposition to stay with the same time, same dates? <coughs> Did I hear Kay start to speak earlier? I was just noting that I don't have a concern with the current date and time. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. So we arrive at the other business um, or open discussion. Nine minutes. What are we going to do? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> if you 
you have anything? Get your nine minutes back. If uh, there's no other business or discussion, I make a motion that we uh, close the business. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. aye. Thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it. Have a great day. <laughs> <laughs> I tried.